everyone, we are live yet again, and this is going to be my author's chat of the week, so I'm going to keep an eye out for my co-host, and hopefully she'll be joining me in just a little bit. I see her already on, so that's perfect. Let's see if she's in by. But for those who don't know, this is just a chit-chat about all things bookish, writing, and everything in between, and hello! Hi! How are you? Good, how are you? Good! I'm kind of very excited to actually be able to talk to you because I've been following you and your whole writing journey for a long time, it feels like now. <laughs> oh, I feel like I've been on here forever, just like struggling. <laughs> uh, well, yes, everybody has moments like that and, you know, we all start at the same kind of place and that's a struggle. <laughs> But um, so just like, you know, because I do these weekly and so kind of how I do them is I let my co-host, which is you, um, introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about you, your writing, I, you know, and however you want to introduce yourself and then we'll go from there. Okay. And I just want to give a slight warning because I keep getting a notification on my phone that's saying, I don't know if it's from TikTok, but it's like free up memory. Um, I close all my background apps, so in case I get crashed, I don't, it's never crashed before, but I've never gotten that warning before. So when I opened the live, it was like letting me know that I need to free up space so it doesn't force close. So in case... Interesting. I've never seen that before. <laughs> it, it, it just came up twice. I like quickly, like when I opened up the live and then I, it popped up. So then I quickly like closed all the apps right before you like invited me and then it came up again so in case it randomly shuts off it was not me hanging up it's okay it's okay hey don't worry there's always i feel like there's always something that goes a little bit a kilter to a lot depending on lives one time i had i wasn't able to get back in time so i did the live in the car because i was like i promised someone i was gonna do this so ignore me to listen to her <laughs> um but yeah so I, when I jumped on TikTok, I had a literary agent. So I was mm -hmm. like, hey, let me get on TikTok. Cause you know, I saw all the book talk tables in Barnes and Noble. I'm like, I should do this in my free time. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it took me a few years to, I've been writing since like, I didn't, I started later. I think I was like 21. So it was like 2011. I started writing, it took me like seven or eight years to write that book. I got a literary agent, but then I jumped on TikTok and then like things went south after about a year and a half. The more people I met that had agents, um, they're like, you know, that doesn't sound like a very good relationship. I don't know. So um, I left my agent last year, still queried the same book again, and I just signed with somebody a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I saw that. So that is so exciting. How do you feel that that is now off your chest? Oh my God, like such a huge weight has been lifted. Like I found like, you know, that, oh, once I get a literary agent, like I'll be able to start writing again. Like I was joking, but it seriously was like such a, like, I don't know if you're querying or if you're planning to, it literally like drains the life out of you because it's just constant rejection. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it, like kind of it's like such a writing buzzkill but um I do finally feel like good and free to like work on things again so it's nice it's a big change well like querying is an art form in and among itself and you could be a person that does a fantastic book but if you're bad at querying that's you know that's another different kind of animal and I I feel like I'm that person I'm uh, I, I like my books, you know, I got some recognitioning awards on them so far, but I'm indie because I'm bad at querying. I really am. And so I'll probably, I usually, if, whenever I start a, a big series, that's when I query the first one just to see. So down the line, I'll probably do it again, but just not, I'm not, I don't know where, I don't know where I'm weak, but I know I'm weak somewhere. <laughs> it's hard because it also though, like the way it is now, it's like so subjective that like, you'll never know if you're weak or not. Like, it's just mm -hmm. like, no, nope, we're passing. And like, you get no, there's no rhyme or reason. Like I got a lot more full requests this time around than the second, than the first time I queried, but I got a lot more passes without any feedback. So like, yeah. I have no idea where my, like, you know, they could have just been requesting based on my query letter. And like, they thought my opening pages sucked. I had no idea. <laughs> like there's mm -hmm. just no feedback. So it's like, impossible to tell and the timelines for hearing anything takes so long so it's just like 
it's really hard to know if it's you or if it's the book or if it's just the agent, you know, like you, you really can't tell. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. And um, just so you know, because I'll be, unless you're against it, repurposing our chat on YouTube so people can continue following you on your journey and find you that way. But because of that, sometimes I read if there's some a question or something that pops up, I'll kind of pause periodically and answer the question and letting people know. And glad you, glad you like my book. Yay! I love when people pop in and just say, hey, I like your stuff. I do. So let me ask you then, are we allowed to know, Do can we know? Because you probably have said this and I've missed this. That is true. What genre are you writing in? So my, the book that I query, it's historical fantasy slash fantasy romance. I kind of okay. depend- I felt like it was like, yeah. Yeah. So depending on who the agent was, like I would either say historical romance with fantasy elements or, mm-hmm. you know, but it's, it's historical fantasy. Like I confirmed it with my agent, <laughs> historical, so- fantasy, but yeah. So is it going to be kind of like Outlander, where it's fa- historical, fantasy, little undertones, romanced? Yeah, so mine has more fantasy undertones. It's like based on Irish mythology. So like the lore, <laughs> yeah. Um, but so the lore is really like prevalent. Like it is, It I, feel, I read the first like four Outlander books, I think. Um, and it that, that was like very sparse. Like obviously she went through stones but it didn't really like I mean at least from what I read it didn't affect yeah yeah the story on there. um but yeah no so like my main character is a Morrigan um so you know it's just there's more fantasy but there's not it's more it's more the mythology she's not like running around doing like magic kind of like it's there it exists and like it will come out later on but um right now it's more grounded right now See, Celtic mythology in the Irish kind of area is something that I enjoy what I know, but I'm still rather unfamiliar. My familiarity is uh, Norse mythology. That's why I have a whole series just on uh, Norse mythology retellings and other, you know, I have some other stronger suits. Um, Greco-Roman, I feel like, is something most people are introduced at a young age and something like that. But I don't really, I'm still rather unfamiliar or should get better becoming more familiar with Celtic mythology. So what drew you to that? Any particular reason? So, um, you know what, the way, so like my dad's from Ireland and like, I'd love to say it was like from visiting like some cool sites or something, but that wasn't it at all. It was honestly, when I started writing this book, I was looking for a character, like, so it started out like as a contemporary where like she was going to go travel back in time. Um, Mm -hmm but that part's completely cut out of it. Um, But so I was looking for character names and like, I think my mom sent me someone's name, like Moriga, I don't know, something, it was like Morgan maybe. And then, you know, I like to look at the names and see what the names mean. Like as most writers do, we're always looking for like symbolism, you know? But um, I just started looking, I saw something like Morgan, like King Arthur, and then it's like, or another version it's like Morrigan and like these Irish witch like this is all from like a Wikipedia page but then I was yeah. down a rabbit hole and I was like wow like this would be really cool like if I could do you know if I could spin this to retell it my own way just because you know I love historical romance like that's my I love reading that but then I also would love it to have like some magical elements but then I'm like I don't want to write a main character that's like stuck within you know, like the 18th, 19th century, like rules, like I want her to like play with them. And you know, like, she doesn't like abide by society standards kind of thing. But I'm like, I need magic You're like that. Yeah, kind of spun out of control. Like, and that's <laughs> where we landed. So. Hey, I love it. I love it. For those who don't know, and obviously, you're probably more of an expert than I am. But the Morgan or Morgana, like Morgan Le Fay traces back to like the Morgana, which is, isn't she a death entity so yeah or so she's about yeah. like morgan like Le Fay or like i don't mm-hmm. know about, like the king arthur one um but yeah so the morgan like it just depends on your there's like a couple different variations of it for my purposes i interpreted her as like a triple goddess so like she so mm-hmm. there's three of them but other people like refer to the morgan as like one person but it is mm-hmm. like it's the irish goddess of like goddess of war death um but also like wisdom um other good things too not just the war and death i'm drawing a blank yeah 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 
hospitality maybe i think there's a few like they wear a few different hats but like mostly associated with like the warmongering and that kind of you know fear and that kind of stuff so so she's so she's in the way i'm wrapping my head around her she's like athena <laughs> the warrior mixed with hell or hello from norse <laughs> mythology had a had a sister and <laughs> yeah, basically like there's the maiden mother and the crone so like mm -hmm supposed to be the idea of like rebirth and like knowledge and whatever but yeah I, I prefer like the badass like warmongering version you know yeah no I get it and like I and she she is some she is one of those names that even though I am still like I said I repeatedly say that I'm not terribly familiar with Celtic mytho mythos and stuff like that but she's definitely one of those that I uh, I know <laughs> to an extent like yeah. and she pops up a lot like for instance and I know this is going to show how nerdy I am but I've been watching the animated show Vox Machina and they have their version of the Morgan pop up okay. the I can't remember what she's called the Raving Queen or something like that but yeah, yeah. um yeah. Cool. like also you know the Phantom Queen or like there's a definitely a bunch of different names on her um i think it, i didn't read akatar but i think there's a morrigan character in there i've not read that one either <laughs> i think someone's called morrigan i'm not sure like that might be her name but i i assume it's like i know a like reference. yeah sarah j moss like pulls from all different places yeah so. i feel like i feel like I, I always hate to admit stuff like that, but I'm like a bad book talker. I don't know some of these iconic uh, references. Like, there we go. I have a comment saying there is an Akatar, a Morgan or a Morgana. So you, there you go. But I, yeah. I have no idea. I have not read it. I know. I'm always like, <laughs> I read it, but I don't, ugh, I tried a couple times and I want to be obsessed with something. Like I'm jealous of everyone that's like in mm -hmm. the, it seems so cool. But I tried it like two or three times and I just can't. If it's I, not for you, it's not for you. I think so. Like I tried Throne of Glass and I got like halfway through the book and I was like, I have to put this down. It was just not for me. So I might just not be a fan of Sarah J. Moss's writing style. I don't know. I'm just not hey, no, I mean, that's the That's okay. And I think people have to understand that there's a book for everybody and everybody has a book but you know just one book is never going to appeal to the masses there's always going to be someone count contradicting and when it comes to poor reviews you have to also consider that that someone may just not like your writing style and has nothing to do with your quality of your story yeah um i have a couple comments here um hi bailey and yeah she could do throne of glass either and then Lindsay says she's obsessed with loss and she'd love to write something like that someday but i don't feel smart i know wouldn't it be so cool to come up with one of these like sh i didn't watch all i watched some of loss but i understand how complicated it, got it is <laughs> it got wild <laughs> like I, lost. <laughs> i've heard things about it but yeah it'd be so cool to like write one of these like epic stories that was just mm -hmm. like complicated and like twisty and has everyone on the edge of their seats that's that's all you can hope for yeah that's, that's the goal I mean I, yeah. I do love I love trying to embed twists and I'm always curious for my readers if they really do think they're twist or did they see them from a mile away because I'm like <laughs> I feel like I'm so sneaky and I'm like ha 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 and then you know I'm like waiting waiting did anybody get I, you earlier <laughs> did I get you <laughs> yeah like so I I love knowing if like the stuff that's what so like I have uh, my book out with some beta readers right now and I'm like did the twist land are they <laughs> well like I've been really honing in on that um, okay I was wondering I was wondering how you were doing that since you now have an agent if you were doing betas or stuff like that while you were um trying to get a publishing representation so that's why I didn't know actually I don't know that side of things yeah I, I guess I tried the querying did not succeed the one that I queried last time, though, the comment I got was I was going to write an, a young adult series, and young adults are very stringent on how big you can get. Yeah. They don't like big books, and my book was too big. <laughs> so I didn't want to edit all that out, so I was like, it's okay, I'm already indie, I'll just continue on. Uh, you you can almost get, like, with some agents, it could be like an auto-reject. They put, like, mm -hmm. if they see your word count is out of a certain thing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah is crazy but um so I was with so initially so when I signed with my first agent I had done a few rounds of revisions with her and then at the second round of revisions 
she never read it. She was like, oh, send it out to some beta readers and then like, you know, finish it up and then, you know, send it back to me. Um, and she kept pushing me out to beta readers. And like that, that was the second round of revision that she never, I never got feedback on. She kept pushing me out to beta readers and stuff. And I'm like, but I have an agent. Like, why aren't you telling me what you think? Um, yeah, yeah. A little bit wary of that. Cause I'm like, what, what is the point? But like, obviously like I'm obsessed with using beta readers. I think it's like so valuable. But so when I signed with my newer agent, she's the communications like completely different so like I'm not so she's again she was like you know she gave me like her version of an edit letter but we talked for like a couple hours about what I needed to work on or just like her ideas um and it was more it's nothing massive it was just like looking for like historical ac um inaccuracies and then yeah. you know Big just one. seeing yeah and just seeing if like basically just kind of like um I don't know what like just reader reactions it's not necessarily like Matt because like my book really has been <laughs> revised a lot like but um so she was like why don't you just put out a call on your TikTok and see if you you know you can get some people to give you some feedback and then like you can implement any changes that are necessary and then we'll go on submission so like I was I don't mind using the beta readers but I was like oh my god this happened to me last time and I never heard from my agent again basically yeah. Um, but it's not like that at all. And the feedback I'm getting has been like really great. Um, you know, it's just pointing, like, I'm obviously way too close to the story. Like there's just certain that's things. True. That's true. <laughs> like there's some things that I just like know and I'm like, oh, doesn't everybody know this? And then like someone asked me a question and they're like, so why did they let her away like that? And I was like, oh my God, I never thought of it. Like, why did they just let her go? Like stuff that I just like, it's like so obvious, but so it's just like minor things that I need to kind of tweak. Um, but yeah, so I feel good that it's not like, you know, my agent's not looking for like this overhaul of my story. Like that wouldn't have worked for me because I know it doesn't need it. Um, it's kind of just pulling some of the lore. It's like, it's a very slow start. And then a lot of stuff because like my main character has like amnesia. Um, yeah. But so, you know, she's kind of learning, figuring things out, having like some flashbacks. And then like towards the end, it's just like fast exploding <laughs> so I need to kind of like weave some of that in a little bit earlier and like most most of my feedback has basically been similar where it's just like would love to like get this a little bit sooner or whatever but um yeah so this this I think using betas is like fairly common with traditional publishing like maybe not as many like I I have sent it out to like 30 people because that's how many like I there's a lot more people that responded but I just wouldn't have been able to keep track of that. So I base anyone that was like kind of persistent with asking to read it, I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can only expect so many to actually respond. Like yes. I've a book out years ago to like random people that I never heard from again. For all I know, my book yep. is on online somewhere. <laughs> yep. And that, that was, that was one of the two things I wanted to ask you um, that popped in my head was for me, I'm very, so, well, conscientious about making sure I apply for my copyright cert certificate. Um, so I have that timestamp proof um, of when I have finished writing my draft. It's my yeah. polished first draft. But because of that, you know, I didn't know if if you have went and got yourself, well, your draft copy written or that certificate. Technically, by definition, it's already copyrighted. I get it. I get it. But <laughs> yeah, so I think that must be what it is. Because like, for this to be like the second, like agent that's told me to send it out with no like qualms at all about it. And then, you know, I I've seen like other industry professionals, like over the years who are like, get beta readers, get beta readers. And no one ever mentioned, like, obviously, I know something can be stolen. But like, people steal published works all the time. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a risk no matter what you do kind like kind of um so I'm just I you know they told me to send it they're not worried about it you have the proof like that you you know you sent it out and I guess like in my it's case right. I assume, like the agent knows like the ins and outs of those laws mm -hmm. whatever and like I'm just I would be fully relying on her to like <laughs> fix it if someone took it you know what I mean so it, yeah it's a little bit different, but no, I'm not worried about um, beta readers. And yes, yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, because uh, I'm always the opposite. I make sure I 
submit the the copyright certification. As soon as I do that, then I'm I'm like, okay, betas, let's do this. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I, art readers, let's come on. Yeah, it doesn't hurt at all for like the peace of mind. Um, oh yeah, oh yes. Yeah. Much rather risk having someone steal my book than like not use betas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're just invaluable. Oh, they're essential. They're really they really are essential. They really are. But yeah, going kind of talking about when you were saying um also about how your betas are helping you and what you're looking at right now is trying to make sure you are historically accurate i had to do that for my because i my viking fantasy series because um i think it was way back when i was writing the second novella um i was incorporating a lot about long ships mm -hmm. and a lot of information about that and I had done a lot of research but i used the term gunwale which is the edge of the side of the ship where someone was leaning against and my editor was like, um, th did they have guns back then? It wouldn't be called a gun whale. And I was like, that's the term for it, but I can't use that term because it's not front per the date. So yeah, it's, it's good stuff. <laughs> you really do need to like stuff like that. I wouldn't even think about I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. This language, like th these words, it's correct, but it's not correct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I know I've been caught a couple of times and or had to argue my case of like why I could use this verbiage for yeah. something that's set back then. And so it's, yeah. it's just an interesting thing when you're an author and has someone point out, um, what about that? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that is. I know. And then I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I messed up. And then <laughs> then, but again, beta readers, this is why you're trying to have 50,000 people yeah. look at your thing before it publishes. And then there's still a most likely chance there's going to be an error in there no matter what. But yep. we try to catch them all as much <laughs> prior. But yeah. And Lindsay say, I could never. Yeah, it is hard. Like I like, so I personally find it more difficult to world build than I mm -hmm. do pull from like something that already exists and then kind mm -hmm. of make it work for me. Um, I don't know how like fantasy authors like do full blown like, kingdoms worlds universes i'm just like wow <laughs> yeah. well i have a, a comment saying all volunteers tribute to be a beta reader i don't know if you have open calls for betas um if i don't have open calls for betas at the moment but i do have open calls for arc readers so the ones that leave reviews in the end and so that information's in my link on my bio <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. but uh but yeah no it's it is such an interesting route of having the rounds of editing and then you actually get your editor or editors depending on what you need and it's really? it's a process it, it really is a process. I know it's scary to think that like technically I do all of this and like I still have to go on submission and like find mm -hmm. a public but I'm I'm not letting this book like a lot of people will query and then they'll query a book for a really long time. And if that book doesn't work, mm -hmm. they will write a new book and query that. But like, I was just not doing that. I'm like, I got an agent for this one before. Like, I know it's good. Like, I know it has market potential, like, or marketability, whatever. Um, like, I know it could sell and people will like it. I was like, I can't do it. Like, I'm, I was like very close to... I wasn't going to write them another book and be like, here, please take me now. You know what I mean? So, but it was like the 11th hour I found my agent. So I it was meant to be, meant yeah. to be. So that's good. So let me ask, is this uh, this book that you, your book baby, uh, or is it going to be part of a series? Or are you doing a standalone? How are um, you so intending to go forward? I queried it as like a series, um, standalone with series potential. Okay. Um, there's literally one sentence at the end of my book that makes it a cliffhanger. Like I added, oh. it, like, it makes it like, you know, most things are like tied up, but it's very obvious. Like the story, ha there's more to continue, like if need be. Mm -hmm. But I added that one sentence that, so I don't know if like that, like officially makes it like cliffhanger. But if I took that away, it doesn't affect really yeah. like some people, I don't even know if some people picked on some picked up on some of the context clues about like this cliffhanger, but um, if I needed to, I could remove the sentence and for publishers because I know they're wary of like series. I think for debut authors, um, so yeah, I could say it's a standalone, but 
my intention is this series like I always thought of like a trilogy but I have no idea like I only did trilogy because I'm like there's three more again so but I would write as many like I I love this world I love these characters um yeah but yeah so hopefully they'll want me to write lots of books <laughs> well this- I hope so too I I realized that um, I have nothing against standalones, but I do tend to gravitate towards series. I, I want to immerse myself in a world and stay in it as long as possible. Yeah. But I'm a series writer as well. Like if I'm going to dedicate writing and world building, I want to stay in it as long as possible. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm so nervous for the editing stage. I came up with another project idea in case I have to offer up something different. Yeah, like that was, I don't mind that. And I understand, but I think I was so like bitter about having to leave my agent like the way that whole thing worked out like I feel like Mm -hmm. she really stalled my career for no reason other than like she just didn't feel like answering her emails or like she just completely put me on the back burner and like I think that was very unfair like to string me along for like 10 months like a lot of things could have happened so I wonder and this is this is you know I don't know but I wonder if there are agents who do that with the purpose of if they already have someone who's doing something similar to what you're doing, they hold one on the back burner while they're giving the love to the other. So they're not going to have a competition down the road. So I think, I I think generally agents won't sign you if you, if they have a client that's doing something similar, they'll be like, love this, but I've seen a lot of people that have been like rejected just based on like, I love this, but it's too similar to like, other projects that I have on my roster or whatever so they're usually pretty good about that up front um I think this agent just like her her so about two weeks after I sent in my termination letter I saw that on Twitter her assist so like I had been she was like the president of an like a well-established agency it's like been around for 100 years um she has an assistant so I all of my emails like I was in contact with her assistant more so than her. Um, So I had two people working on my book, which I thought was great, like extra eyes on it. Um, But so when I sent in my letter of termination, I noticed on Twitter that her assistant left her like two weeks later. So I think there must have been something like bizarre going on because like, that's weird. (laughs) Well, I mean, it's, it's always rough having to like make a dramatic choice of stepping away from someone that's, not right for you. I know some other authors on here had to leave publishers and stuff like that just because it it just ended up they were butting heads and it wasn't working for whatever reason. And um, sometimes those breaks are better because now again, now you have a new agent and you're working for, you know, it sounds like you're enjoying the process far better this time. <laughs> Way better. Like the, the power imbalance the last time, like she did nothing to like alleviated it was like I thought she was a big deal and I was very lucky to be like speaking with her and she never did anything to like be like no 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 no. like this is like a, a business relationship like it's supposed to be you know what I mean like I she yeah. should have been making me feel like I was annoying her by emailing her um and I'm really not a needy person like I'm very good to just go do my thing and if I have a question like just quickly I'll send an email like I'm not like looking for phone calls you know um but yeah, it was just bizarre. But yeah, so I was like, to have to leave and query, like querying so, so much. So to, that was what I was afraid of than anything. I'm like, I have to go do this again. And like, I had told myself I was going to give it to the new year because I just was like, I know the book is good. And then I also like, I was building a platform for myself on mm-hmm. t- like how Like she didn't give, she, my first agent didn't care at all that I was on TikTok. She was just like, oh, like book talk is such a passionate corner of the internet. And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, like (laughs) book talk make, can make or break you. Like if you like, it has huge potential, like, um, but yeah, so she just like, didn't really care. She just wasn't invested. Um, but so I'm like, I don't want to waste this, like. Mm -hmm you know, who knows what's going to happen. Like in two years, maybe book talk goes away. Like I didn't want to like build a platform and then lose it. And like my book is just dead in the water kind of thing. Like, I just feel like I should use whatever I have to my advantage Mm -hmm. right now. So I was very close to, I was considering self-publishing, but then I got an offer from an indie press. So I was so close to publishing with them. Like I love the editor that I was talking to. Um, 
it was really hard to say no to her because it's like you know my coming out sooner she was amazing like um but then I got my agent last agent I queried and because she had just opened up on query tracker like mid December and I was like oh I'm just gonna send that I think like the last the last letter I sent and then I heard from her like a week or two later so I was between you know do I do I do the sure thing where I'm gonna get like my book is gonna come out or Mm -hmm. but I was like let me just try (laughs) traditional publishing one more time yeah and I know you've let you you're a person on here that has a decent following who would love to see your work out, you know, as soon as possible. But yeah. we also, you know, it's the nice thing about this community is that we want the best. So if this, this, the best means we have to wait a little longer. Okay. Well, we'll have to wait a little longer yeah. <laughs> before we meet Morgan. <laughs> and I do think like, I notice people are really like, it sucks when you're like teasing a book that doesn't exist yet. But, like, people, I notice, like, just readers that'll be in the comments still, te- or, like, just even for other people's books, because, like, I'm friends with other authors that are, like, doing this, too, like, they're teasing their work and progresses, but, like, the readers are, like, somebody tag me when this book comes out, like, it's not, yeah. like, they're not, like, oh, God, another one, like, it's not even out, they're, like, okay, I want to know when it comes out, like, I'll circle back, and it's just, it's nice, like, to know that the yeah. readers are here, you know? Yeah, and, and, again, I know there's there's definitely biases in the book talk community of what way is the best way. And I don't think there's necessarily one way is the best way of publishing, be it indie, hybrid, or um, trad, you know, the big, the big ones, but understand that everything has pros and cons. And so, you know, the yeah. nice thing of that opportunity that maybe you will get that big, sweet ticket deal from a, <laughs> one of the big publishers, I mean... Gosh, that's kind of nice to be able to like it's not a blink I know that it's going to take a, a while for it to be out but once it's out you know there is that distribution that you know mm-hmm. and the, the potential of marketing help not always yeah. but I know. Marketing help. that was the other reason I'm like you know I'm not even get like I'll probably have to be marketing my book by myself anyway so mm-hmm. like wouldn't I try like the indie route but I also just the, my biggest reason for not doing indie is just like, I don't think I have the spoons for all of the different like hats I have to wear to get a book out. <laughs> you know? I mean, I like hats. I like actually like hats, but like, yes, as an indie author, that is true. Like I try, I, I did the dumb thing and I published my first book and um, just sat there for a while being like, why isn't it being found it's it's out there it's on <laughs> it's there why aren't people finding it and then I had to like re-educate myself and be like no there's a lot I need to do <laughs> you I, got the work yeah <laughs> work the system. of it and I'm like do I really want to experiment with this book as my first book and then mm-hmm. it takes me so long to write in general so I'm like I'm never going to get a freaking book out in the world. Like I'm going to be 50 before this book, any books come out. So I'm like, you know, I I was really struggling. So then when I got the, like the indie press offer, I was like, oh, this is like, you know, Mm -hmm. split the difference. Someone's going to like make me have some deadlines, Mm -hmm. help me get my book out. Um, And it'll be like a hell of a lot sooner. But do you think you work better with deadlines assigned to you or? I, I think I would. Because I, well, see, I've never really had to, I've never had, like, a real deadline before. And I think, like, I used to ask my, like, my first agent, I'm like, can you give me a deadline so I, like, meet this? And, like, she didn't really, I should have known then when she was like, oh, just, you know, okay, how would I tell you? Like, she didn't care. And I'm like, there was no urgency. So she'd be like, all right, get it to me by January. And I'd be like, okay, working on it. And so, yeah, I would work really hard to try and meet that. So I do think deadlines work for me because, like, if I'm the only one that's in charge, like, I'm just like, I have no accountability. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. enough. Yeah. And I, I, I'm just, I, I first was blaming it on the fact that I had homeschooled growing up. And so the whole self-regulating on things. And so I, for me, I can micromanage and I'm pretty organized planner (laughs) with that schedule and all that kind of stuff. Um, it always irritates me if I can't match my goals, but, um, I am definitely self goal oriented my you know but there are a lot of people that say it's so much easier if someone tells me get this done by now yeah because I don't want to let that person down and then you know this time around 
like my agent I was like so what's like what's the deadline when do you want this book back and she's like look it's gonna take as long as it takes you to do it and I'm like yeah yeah mm, fine but I'm right now I'm really like I'm not gonna let like weeks go by I'm very eager to like get this book out into the world I want to go on submission so um I'm gonna try and like get my edits done in the next couple of weeks so you know I I don't want to wait forever I've been waiting trad publishing takes so long I don't want to like wait it does. It does. so I'm yeah. trying to hold myself accountable but it'll be a totally different story when I have to just write a new book because I know yeah. my not going to be like okay I need you to have this new book written by whenever you know she's not going to do that but if you get a book deal there you need to have a certain amount of like you need the book done by a deadline so mm -hmm. saying. it'll it'll be interesting it'll hopefully be good a good experience I do have a couple comments popping up so let me answer them just a moment one was asking if I have a second omnibus for the garden speaker series my viking series coming out excuse me a cough yes five through eight um, was actually f following up with that. It'll be out within. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give myself three weeks. Let me give myself that buffer because I keep saying it's going to come out next. But then there's always there's been a couple crises that I had to deal with prior, so I kept getting bumping. But it is coming out soon, and that will be one of the next couple arcs available. Will be for that. But and I have a shout out from another homeschooler. Yay, homeschool. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Anywho, um, I wanted to go back and um, was going to ask you about the facts you mentioned, I think a little earlier that now that you you have your, your new agent and obviously, I, yes, you're going through your beta stage and then going to do the editing. But I thought you mentioned now you feel inspired or able, you feel mentally able to start writing another book. Or are you yeah. just going to wait? No. So I was going to wait so no, I wasn't going to wait. I had emailed my agent. Like, so when I first had my um, book out to betas, I gave them like a three, four week turnaround. Um, and I had emailed my agent. I'm like, should I start working on something new? Like, you know, what do you think? Or like, should I be working on the second book? I know that's like frowned upon, but um, she was like, you know, you could start plotting things out or whatever, which I don't do. Um, <laughs> hey, everybody's different. <laughs> But um, so I was like kind of excited and I was going to start working on that. But then like my beta feedback, some of it came back like super quickly. So my wheels mm -hmm. been turning with that story. So I'm still focusing on the ones I forgot, but I'm feeling like refreshed and like excited to just work on something else because I also feel like, you know, I have like, so like going forward, like my story ideas. I have to run them past my agent. Like if she doesn't like mm -hmm. like them or think like, Ugh, it's kind of weird, whatever. Like, you know, there is now I have someone else to like worry about. So like, you know, yeah. I'm looking forward to kind of bouncing ideas off of someone. So I'm like 25 K into a vampire work in progress that I'm really excited for. It's like, I think it's going to be so good, but I I'm just kind of stuck. I'm stuck at that 25k mark, but I'm very excited to just like start working on it again. So yeah, once I get my beta feedback done, I'm just like fully gonna be a writer again. <laughs> so okay, let me let me ask, are you gonna try to wait for all your betas to submit stuff and do it at once? Or are you just gonna take each individual betas notes and look at it? So go to the next? does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. But so I've already been kind of getting it. Um, Oh, it's been trickling in over the last few weeks and it's been very similar. Um, I spoke with one beta, like we actually had a Zoom call and um, she's from Ireland. So I was like, she was like super invested in like, you know, the mythology and everything too. So I was just like, she helped me with some like lore stuff that I'm like super excited to implement earlier. And then... Um, you know, the, her notes have kind of been mirroring like what other people are starting to say too. So I already kind of know what I need to do to basically like my, it's a dual POV, but my, the, the love interest. So he's actually Kuhulan, Um Oh, okay. Very you know, nice. <laughs> yeah. um, so he kind of pops into the story with like zero backstory. Like his comes like way too late and I need to like introduce it sooner. I think I was like afraid of like spoiling things, but mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit too 
sparse for readers. Um, so, you know, there's stuff like that that I already know, like this needs to get fixed. So I'm just gonna, yeah. I got enough feedback. I think I've gotten feedback from like five or six people. And I think that's enough of a consensus. Like too many, too many, yeah. you know, ideas can kind of mess with it. But so far they're all kind of saying the same thing. So I'm just ready to get get cracking on it. And I feel, I feel like in the fantasy community, it is trending toward Irish mythos. And so I think you will be right on, right on target. <laughs> Cause I've been hearing more and more chatter about um, people talking about uh, Celtic and not Norse, sorry, Celtic and Irish stuff. And so, like I said, um, Man, I... right, right there. You're, you're going with you're going with the. I feel like there's a, a trend building that way. It's still it's still in the baby stages, and um, um I'm writing out my Nordic stuff. <laughs> but, but, but no, that's cool. Stuff like it does all. I do think it's like timeless when you're working with like, you know, mythology mm -hmm. like that. So like, even if one has like an uptick, like it, it always like comes back around. I do think like it is a timeless kind of thing. And there's so many ways, especially with modern fiction, fantasy, whatever you want to um, label it as, your version of it's going to be different than someone else's. <laughs> and so that's nice. And then you'll have people who just love it in general and people who will be uh, like obsessing about your version and they'll be like, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's your way or no way. <laughs> Only way. Only way. I mean, I feel like talk about vampires, that's that way. They're definitely certain biases in the vampire lore and that's a huge and getting larger each time and yeah I mean I grew up with an interview with a vampire so that's kind of like <laughs> I haven't read or seen that one but I'm gonna have to start doing more like research on vampires just to make sure you know hey. it's not just Twilight based <laughs> Twilight. True, true. that is on one side that is on one yeah. side yeah um, I have a comment coming up and says, have you considered marketing to adapt it to anime? Um, I mean, okay, talking about adapt adaptations, I would love to see my stuff be any kind of adaptation. <laughs> if done by the right director, producer, animator, whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm open for my stuff becoming a movie, a TV show, anime, whatnot, down the future. Let's talk. Percent. <laughs> Absolutely. Get to all the adaptations. <laughs> exactly. It's it's like let's let let's lease our ideas out. Let's let's uh find new ways to reach people, but <laughs> but baby steps, baby steps. Publish the book, distribute the book, <laughs> get the fans, build outwards. <laughs> I know, it's true. There's steps to this. <laughs> you just want to skip to the end though. <laughs> what, yeah. what what was that so song? Can we skip to the good part? <laughs> yeah. Leave that button. <laughs> yep yep oh man that's funny so when did you decide that you wanted like um when did what was it that made you decide I'm gonna write the story and I'm actually gonna make it a book because there are a lot of people who are like I'm gonna write a story and just aren't don't have that fire behind it and yeah you know, don't have that motivation yeah. or whatever um so I was commuting to work um so what really started and this like sounds terrible but I was reading this contemporary romance story and like I ate it up like there was maybe I don't know I read like five of them like just real quick but like it wasn't that good I mean she's a best-selling author like there's nothing wrong with it obviously the story like hooked me but it was also very like juvenile at the same time and I'm like I could write something like this like you know I like writing like why don't I try doing something like this um not a knock on that like I loved those books like it really did get me into like at least you know a light went off when I was reading them but um I was taking the train into work every day and it you know my commute one way was like an hour and 15 minutes so I had <laughs> two and a half hours on the train every day I'm like I really should try and do something with my time so mm -hmm. I started writing a book and it was very different from this the the main the two characters are the same like the same vibe basically they're the same original characters I had but like I just finally filled in their backstory and it turns out they're gods and they just didn't remember um <laughs> I like it yeah so but yeah I was just writing on the train every day and like I would take six months on six months off like I was not very I knew I was gonna get to the end of it but I didn't have like any like 
legitimate plans for it until I don't know when I was like oh hey like you should try traditional publishing like I don't know how I got into it I think I was like on Instagram maybe and I just started making friends um and that seemed to be what they were doing like I didn't know anything about self-publishing at the time like I was off social media for a really long time and I think I only got back on in the last like five-ish years um so yeah, I think it just kind of morphed into like, I just kept writing because I was commuting. So I was going to work every day. So it was just like, you know, until it, the story just like wouldn't leave me alone. So then like, you know, that's, even that's, when I good, was, that's a good vibe. That, that's a good vibe. <laughs> yeah. Even when I wasn't writing for six months, I was thinking about it every day. And mm-hmm. I was really guilty for not doing it. And then until finally one day I'd open my laptop again and I'm writing and I'm like, oh, why did I ever stop? Um, but, <laughs> See, good. That, those are all good signs. Those, yeah. all mean, those are all, all what you need, I think, to finish a book. Um, yeah. And those sensations, I, I totally believe, you know. And I always think it's interesting what, what inspires a person to do it. For me, I just always... It was kind of obnoxious little punk kid that was like, I or I come up with um, my sister and I had like um, developed this multiverse, magical multiverse in our as our children, and so I had my alter ego. My sister had one, yeah. and I was like, I, I'm going to write this down one day, and I just was like, I'm going to do it. I had no idea how, and years later, I was kind of circling, getting close, close, like I'm going to write, I'm going to write, but it was funny because it wasn't that series. It was another idea that just popped in my head and I could not I was so obsessed about this idea I was like I'm gonna write this into a book use it as a demo book it ended up being a demo series and went on from there (laughs) Uh, yeah like sometimes there's just like an idea that gets you and it just doesn't let go um but yeah I didn't like realize that I could do this as like a career like it never occurred to me that I could be a writer like it Mm -hmm. was I wasn't like I always enjoyed like English class and like you know my creative writing classes in college but it didn't occur to me like I could actually write a book one day and be an author um no one was telling me I couldn't it just like I just didn't think of it um but like it didn't the connect from like me reading all these books to like oh there's an actual person behind these that are sitting down and writing them every day like you could be that person too it just like completely was lost on me um but yeah I don't know I wish I knew what made me decide to do like traditional publishing too. Like I'm trying to think and like, I don't know how I would have even found the more comfortable approach because, you know, trying to do everything yourself is daunting and having at least someone else be there with you, you know, is, you know, start though. I don't think I knew like self publishing was a thing because Mm -hmm. I was around like, I wasn't talking to people online so I was so like immersed in the traditional, but like thinking that was the only way. And then like, I was so deep into that, that like, by the time I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> there's other avenues. It just wasn't for me anyway, like, because I write at a snail's pace and I would never have a backlist. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like I, there are definitely faster writers out there. I know I'm a slow reader in general, so there are definitely fa- have to be faster writers out there, yeah. but if you just are dedicated, you'll get to it. Yeah, Sorry, you- I have one comment pop up and going back referencing the anime comment because, yeah, there is a vi- there is an anime called Vinland Saga. It is about Vikings. I have seen it because um, all things Vikings. But, yeah, the nice thing about my Viking series, it's trendy at the moment. Who knows how long? We'll see. But, hey, if you know an animator, tell me. <laughs> we like- talk. Viking stuff is always kind of, like, cool and trendy or no i think i i think it kicked off when the original series of the vikings from the history channel picked, yeah. i think because that was the first time really there were a couple other um, examples maybe but that was really the first time where they were trying to be fairly historically accurate and made it interesting and made them people versus we barbarian we wear yeah. worn helmets we and so once they humanized them and gave them you know a little bit of the history behind them and um but then since then i've seen movies and shows and yeah i I feel like that the viking show came out so long ago that like vikings have just been like mainstay for a while now but i guess yeah like it really would have kicked off with the history channel show yeah that's at least that's how i attribute it so yeah but but yeah i mean 
again, things come in trends. I'm sure, you know, something else will pick up yeah. historically and next and next, but uh, I just, I like Vikings right now, but I'm also Scandinavian. And so it's also a historical interest of mine too. Genetics. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. Well, actually, I look, wow, we're running the hour really quickly. Let me ask you, because I don't want to forget, if people want to follow you mm -hmm. and immerse themselves in all things your life, obviously you're on this platform. Are you anywhere else that you would recommend people to follow you, find you, keep their ears out for your upcoming work? I'm on Instagram, but I mostly- Are you good at it? Let me know how. <laughs> you know what? I just repurpose my- TikToks, I take off the watermark and like mm -hmm. I'm actually like I've had videos that just they're like super old from TikTok that like one of them right now is at like 1.3 million views and it just keeps going but they're writing related they're not mm -hmm. related so yeah, yeah, yeah anytime you're trying to like market something you care about like your book it's like boo um but yeah so Instagram, no, I'm just, I'm not interesting there. I occasionally will post a story. TikTok is my biggest thing. I'm on, um, I'm on Twitter, but I'm just a lurker because that place is hell. Um, hey, Angela. Sorry. I'm out of <laughs> um, and uh, am I anywhere else? No, TikTok is my, is this my. This is your home. We like it. I mean, this is a home for many a person. It is, yeah. it is like, I think on a, <laughs> I'm unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately on, I feel like all the platforms and it stretches my energy pretty thin, but this is, this is the one community I will say repeatedly that is the most vibrant book community. Yeah. They are, they're very, mo the most engaging, very friendly, and it's a great place to be. <laughs> yeah, I really like the community on here. I find it way, way more inviting than like other places. And there's like so much activity and engagement, like mm -hmm. whereas Instagram, it's not. And I don't think that's the reader's fault or anything. I think it's the algorithm, the way it works, unless you're like paying to promote your store. <laughs> like it's just, things are not going anywhere. Um, I try, I attempted to upload a couple things to like YouTube shorts, but they just like, they have like, they're sitting at like 30 views. So, you know, I don't. I haven't even attempted the short part of YouTube. I have a channel and that's where I repurpose like these chats and I have like a mythological series and stuff like that. But I've seen shorts and I was trying to figure out how short do they qualify shorts? <laughs> I guess it's the, you know, the little it's, TikTok things. Yeah. Like, so my friend uses it and she's good at it. Um, mm -hmm. She says that like, she's like, oh, Kelsey, you should upload your stuff. Like, I think it'll do well on there right now. So like things that are under 10 seconds are, are doing well. So it seems to be kind of mimicking TikTok. Mm -hmm. uh, Whereas like TikTok is now mimicking YouTube, but anyway, they're both, they're both like trying yeah. to merge together. <laughs> but yeah, so I think right now, if you try, like, if you have any like shorter form like sounds, it's worth. Just, I mean, it it's nothing to just upload them. You know, it's not. Yeah, it's super That's easy. True. That's, That's true. Yeah. Well, let me ask another question. I I always try to make sure I fit these two in. Um, <laughs> and this one is: um, Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like? To people to know about you, your upcoming work, um, topics you like to like just talk about or questions you have or anything like that? I, I know it's a generalized question, <laughs> but I, I just always want to make sure we we cover everything that you I, would want to talk about. <laughs> I've covered like the most exciting things about me right now. <laughs> hey, you're having a lot of stuff happen all at once, it feels like. Well, man, it's not all at once. You've dedicated so much work into I, this. I, <laughs> Like, it seems like, like, if anyone's just joining me now or, like, following me now, they'll be thinking, like, oh, this is, like, an overnight thing, not realizing, like, I have been <laughs> crying in the trenches. But, no, um, it does feel like I'm going into 2023 with a very delusional attitude. Like, I'm getting a book deal. Like, there's no questions about it. You know, I'm very, like, that's my mindset right now. Like, I'm going to write another book. Hopefully it'll be the you know, a book that's in my contract from my book deal, you know, maybe it's a two book deal. That's the book I'm working on. But yeah, no, I don't have anything else. I think we covered everything. My most exciting thing has been finally signing with an agent. So that is still so cool. I mean, I applaud you for all the work that you had to do to do that. Because like I said, I've done a query twice before. And I know at least one time it was the fact that my 
young adult book was too big for a young adult book in yeah. the traditional sense. But I also know that I, I have a lot to learn from <laughs> that whole process. So maybe was- down the line when I do it again for a new series, I'll be more successful. But Ask me for help. I'm like a pro at querying by now, so I'm happy. You see, you see, you're you're getting yourself in trouble now because <laughs> I will. I'll probably be in another couple years because I'm releasing two book series simultaneously. So get at least one done, <laughs> and then work on something else. But with that said, I will I'll come back. I'll talk. <laughs> that too. Show I'm, me your ways, wise one. <laughs> everyone to get agents. That's how I, I want everyone to have an agent if they want an agent. So I'm happy you to have- get an agent. You get an agent. You- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be fantastic. But yeah, I mean, like I said, there's if you are a person and you want to do indie, do indie. If you want to go and try trad, do trad. You know, if you want a little bit of a hybrid, I mean, I would want to be a hybrid indie author one day again still have my rights of the books i release says yeah mine indie but still have the option open to release other works um through traditional publishing i think that's the sweet spot for me at least in my mind everybody has a thing no i think that would be cool to be and also just like with the way that traditional publishing works these days there's so many authors now that that almost like have to be hybrid because it's like, what are you doing in the meantime? Like, you know, it could take, you could be a year on submission. Um, you know, it's crazy. So yeah, I think a lot of authors now are doing hybrid and like, it's amazing for them and it's fun. And I think being hybrid would be awesome. Yeah. And again, it just also depends on how much work you want to put in yourself. Yeah. Potentially, potentially get help versus how much control you want yourself versus giving up some control to a lot of control to yeah, other people. Exactly. I'm I'm cool with just being like, let me write my books and you take care of all that other stuff. For me. <laughs> I mean, that would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> okay. So let me ask, who is your favorite author outside of yourself? <laughs> um... So I've only read one of her books, but I just thought it was so amazing. I've started in, like, I'm just a very slow mood reader, but Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, like, I'm obsessed with, um, oh my god, I'm, okay, Mexican Gothic. I just blanked on the name. I'm, like, looking at the, the cover in my head. I love the way she writes. I think it is freaking amazing. I and I, I bought, like, all her other books, and I've, like, read a couple of chapters, but then, like, I stopped because I'm, like, oh, whatever, I'm doing other things. But, yeah, I'm going to read everything she ever puts out. Like, the way she writes, it's just, (laughs) you feel so smart, but it's also so accessible, and it's just, Mm -hmm. like, she's a wordsmith. I love it. (laughs) And that was called? um, Mexican Gothic. Okay. Definitely. It's, like, it's just a woman in, like, a maroon off-the-shoulder dress with, like, a green Mm -hmm. backdrop, I feel like. I, I'm like a sucker for um, off the shoulder gowns. Like I will buy any cover if there's like <laughs> out and like her shoulders are out. <laughs> That's cool. That's fun. Um, yeah, it's always interesting. How, mm, I don't know if I, I'm, I, you can let me know if this is a question you're not comfortable answering at the moment. If you could design your own book cover for the book you have <laughs> coming, what would you like to see? Or are you going to, Pause that one just because it's not no, there yet. Love to see, obviously, a like a woman in a gown. Um, <laughs> off the shoulders. <laughs> off the shoulders. But no, I would like it to be, I can't think of the name of the book that I saw recently, but I thought the cover was so good. But it's more of like the horror genre. It was like, mm-hmm. I forgot what it was called, but it was just kind of like this woman. It, you know, you see a lot of the landscape, but it's like very dark, but you see like her full silhouette. Like, I don't need like the full close up of it. But just like a dark, moody, like yeah. in a gown, and you know maybe some crows flying around her. Um, I like it. Yeah, that's that. I don't know, but that's I kind like of. It. And I haven't thought too hard on it because I don't want to get my hopes up, and that like if I don't mm-hmm. have too much say in a cover, I'm not gonna like get and a. Like, Same. That is the thing with the yeah. trad is you just you could you could get lots of control, but you might not. It just exactly. depends. Yeah, so we'll see. And and sometimes you will come in with, you know, what you think you want, and then someone else will show you something totally different. You're like, wait. That's awesome. Wait. Oh, yeah. wait. <laughs> I want that. 
Yeah. Oh, exactly. comment here. Pull an Alex Astor and make TikTok vote on it. That would be so cool. <laughs> that would be That's brief. true. That is very true. No, I, it's I, yeah. I have to applaud people who are super creative on here on marketing strategies for their books, and you know, having people vote on you know the covers and all that. I just, I just don't feel it gets. I want. Just, I'm a control freak. I want the full control, and to give that up is hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm not like too. I haven't like given myself too much into that like idea that I get to pick these things because I guess I've always known in the back of my head. Um, I'm not an artist, you know, I, I always think that there's someone else that might have a better idea than me since I'm not like an artist or anything. Like even my cover, like I didn't, I'm not, I just like picked it because I needed to query it and it needed a title. Like, I don't care if it changes. I don't really think it has anything to do with my book. Like it doesn't make sense for my book. So there's certain things I know not to get attached on. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> sorry. Voice is a little scratchy. It always happens. It's like around an hour. It's like my voice is kind of doing the Cinderella pumpkin thing. <laughs> it's reverting into itself. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally understand. Um, I know when I put out my first book, Asara's Claws, I had a totally different cover because I had it a way that I thought I wanted it to be but it wasn't right for the subgenre and everything. And so I had to have someone else who is better at it being like, no, no, it needs yeah. to be more like this. Yeah. And as soon as I changed it, like, I started getting responses. <laughs> I know. And it is true. Like a cover really does do mm -hmm. for the book. So yeah, I'll leave it to the professionals for that. <laughs> okay, that that's fine. And like, I, I'm always impressed when authors want to do it themselves. And I'm like, kudos if you're talented in that way you know go for it i'm an artist i pay pet portraiture for as my other livelihood but i won't do my own covers <laughs> that's totally different than what i need so i respect people who know that trick that's really awesome to be able to do their own covers and like do a good job of it yeah no i wish i wish but on the other hand i also don't want to I spend enough time doing other things. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to add that. I, sometimes it's good to let someone else help. <laughs> 100%. Well, since we've hit our the hour, thank you so much for coming and thank like chit-chatting with me today. And I've been wanting to meet you for a while. And, you know, I'm just so thrilled for you and your achievements so far. And I'll thank be keeping my eye out for... This Mor Morganus either standalone or up to a trilogy. <laughs> or maybe a six book series. Who knows? Or a six book series. You never know. <laughs> oh my God. Nice. But yeah, thank you so much for having me. I haven't done a live in so long. This is my first live of the new year. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. Happy, happy belated new year. <laughs> I know. And, you know, if at any point you want to jump on another one of these and talk more books or, you know, if you yeah. have the next level to announce, let me know. You know, I do these weekly. <laughs> Perfect. It's so much fun. I had a really good time. Me too. Well, have a fantastic night. And thank you, everybody, who's been chiming in. And until next time, we'll yes, see you again. Bye. Bye.